Greetings of the day to all my dear students. I hope that you all are in good health. Today I want to tell you believe in your heart. Why? Believe in your heart that something wonderful is about to happen. Love your life. Believe in your own powers and your own potential. and in your own innate goodness wake every morning with the awe of just being alive discover each day the magnificent awesome beauty in the world explore and embrace life in yourself and everyone you see each day reach within to find your own specialness amaze yourself and arouse those around you to the potential of each new day don't be afraid to admit that you are less than perfect this is the essence of your humanity let those who love you help you trust enough to be able to take look with hope to the horizon of today for today is all we truly have live this day well let a little sun out as well as in create your own rainbows be open to all your possibilities all possibilities and miracles always believe in miracles so a very good morning to all my dear students This is Shreya Jadhav welcoming you all to my e-learning channel and today we are going to do English grade 12 supplementary reading for the enemy part 5 It is written by Paul S Buck So let us know something about the author Paul S Buck born on June 26 1892 died March 6 1973 also known by her chinese name sai zenzu was an american writer and novelist as a daughter of missionaries buck spent most of her childhood in china her novel the good earth was the best selling fiction book in the united states in 1931 32 She was awarded the Nobel Prize on Literature for her rich and truly epic descriptions of peasants' life in China and for her biographical masterpieces. She was the first American woman to win the Nobel Prize for Literature. So now we shall start with the reading and explanation of the chapter. If it could be best if he could be quietly killed the general said not by you but by someone who does not know him i have my own private assassins suppose i send two of them to your house tonight or better any night you need know nothing about it it is now warm what would be more natural than that you should leave your own partition of the white man's room open to the garden while he sleeps certainly it would be very natural sadav agreed in fact it is so left open every night good the general said yawning they are very capable assassins they make no noise and they know the trick of inward bleeding if you like i can even have them remove the body sadav considered that perhaps would be best excellency he agreed thinking of ahena he left the general's presence and then he went home thinking over the plan in this way the whole thing would be taken out of his hands he would tell ahena nothing since she would be timid at the idea of the assassins in the house and yet certainly such persons were essential in an absolute state such as japan was 
who how else could rulers deal with those who opposed them so this we have done in the previous video lecture also that how general takima is telling sadao that he would be sending his personal assassins to kill the men he refused to allow anything but reason to be the atmosphere of his mind as he went into the room where the american was in bed but as he opened the door to his surprise he found the young man out of bed and preparing to get into the garden what is this he exclaimed who gave you the permission to leave your room i am not used to waiting for permission tom said gaily gosh i feel pretty good again but will the muscles on this side always feel stiff is it so sadav inquired surprised he forgot all else now i thought i had provided against that he murmured he lifted the edge of men's shirt and gazed at the healing scar massage may do it he said if exercise does not it won't bother me much the young man said his young face was gaunt under the stubbly blond beard say doctor i have got something i want to say to you if i hadn't met a chap like you well i wouldn't be alive today i know that sadav bowed but he could not speak so eventually now what happened when sadav uh, went home at that time he went to the room where american was supposed to be sleeping but when he went he was awake and he was trying to come out of his bed and try to move at that time sadav told that you are not supposed to no leave the room at that time he told that he is not a person who is ready to accept anybody's permission what to do and what not to do so he will do whatever comes to his mind and by that time duration they both started no talking to each other and at that time tom thanked him warmly that because of him he was alive today perhaps sadav said with difficulty and now i think you had better go back to bed he helped the boy back into the bed and then bowed good night he said sadav slept badly that night time and time again he woke thinking he heard the rustling of footsteps the sound of a twig broken or a stone displaced in the garden a noise such as men might make who carried a burden the next morning he made the excuse to go first into the guest room if the american were gone he then could simply tell henna that so the general had directed but when he opened the door he saw at once that there was on the pillow was a shaggy blond head he could hear a peaceful breathing of sleep and he closed the door again quietly he is asleep he told henna He is almost well to sleep like that. What shall we do with him? Hena whispered her old refrain. Sadao shook his head. I must decide in a day or two, he promised. But certainly, he thought, the second night must be the night. There rose a wind that night and he listened to the sounds of bending bows and whistling partitions. Hena woke too. Ought we not to go? and closed the sick man's partition she said no sadav said he is able now to do it for himself but the next morning the american was still there then the third night of course must be the night the wind changed to quiet rain and garden was full of sounds of tripping eaves and running springs sadav slept a little better but he woke up at the sound of the crash and leaped at his feet so eventually now what happened that as the general told that he would be sending assassins so they waited for them to come for the first night second night third night but slowly and gradually the weather started changing but the american was still in the 
yes true nothing has happened to him and th- and because of this sada was also a bit you no know, perplexed what to do what was that hena cried the baby woke up at her voice and began to wail i must go and see but he held her and would not let her move sadav she cried what is the matter with you don't go he muttered don't go his terror infected her and she stood breathless waiting there was only silence together they crept back into the bed the baby between them yet when he opened the door of the guest room in the morning there was the young man he was very gay and had already washed and was now on his feet he had asked for a razor yesterday and had shaved himself and today there was a faint color in his cheeks i am well he said joyously so the drew his kimono around his very body he could not he decided suddenly go through another night it was not that he cared for the young man's life no simply it was not the worth the strain so eventually sadav thought that at the on the third night there were assassins inside his room so he didn't allow hena also to move out of the room along with the baby but the very next day when he went inside the room to inquire he found that the american was lying down over there only and at that day he was really very happy and he was very energetic and cheerful you are well sadav agreed he lowered his voice you are so well that i think if i put my boat on the shore tonight with food and extra clothing in it you might be able to row to that little island not not so far from the coast it is so near the coast that it has not been worth fortifying nobody lives on it because in storm it is submerged but this is not the season of storm you live you could live there until you saw a korean fishing boat pass by they pass quite near the island because the water is many fathoms deep there the young man stared at him slowly comprehending do i have to he asked i think so sadav said gently you understand it is not hidden that you are here so eventually what happened after waiting for 3 to 4 days sadav finally no took into consideration that now he is supposed to talk to this man and then he told that he will be giving his boat extra clothing food to this person and he will be shifting to the nearby island on that island there were no human population because it would no submerged into ocean when it was storm so eventually it was good enough for him to stay over there at this news the american was not happy and he thought that was it actually worth going and at that time uh, no sadav told that yes he was supposed to go because now everybody knew that he was living over here and his secret was no longer a secret the young man nodded in perfect comprehension okay he said simply sadav did not see him again until evening as soon as it was dark he had dragged the stout boat down to the shore and in it he put food and bottled water that he had brought secretly during the day as well as two quilts he had brought to pawn shop the boat he tied to a post in the water for the tide was high there was no moon and he was without a flashlight when he came to the house he entered as though he were just back from his work and so henna knew nothing yumi was here today she said as she sh- served his supper though she was so modern still she did not eat with him yumi cried over the baby she went on 
with a sigh. She misses him so. The servants will come back as soon as the foreigner is gone. Sadao said he went into the guest room that night before he went to bed himself and checked carefully the American's temperature, the state of wound, and his heart and pulse. The pulse was irregular, but that was perhaps because of excitement. The young man's pale lips were pressed together and his eyes burned. Only the scars of his neck's neck were red. I realize you are saving my life again, he told Sadao. Not at all, Sadao said. It is only inconvenient to have you here any longer. He had hesitated a good deal about giving the men a flashlight, but he had decided to give it to him after all. It was a small one, his own, which he used at night when he was called. So, eventually now what happened that? Yumi was very much uh, no eager to see the children and she came oh, she came over there and Sadao told that slowly and gradually all the servants will come back once this foreigner will go and during the night means before going to bed he went over there to the person to the prisoner of war and he checked his temperature and state of wound checked his heart and pulses and his pulse were irregular because of excitement and moreover to that uh, the American prisoner of war told that Dr. Sadao was again saving his life and at that time Sadao told not at all but it was now not convenient for them to keep him over here and he hesitated he wanted to say something but it was not possible for him at last Sadao gave him his flashlight which usually he used to keep during his night time if your food runs out before you catch a boat he said signal me two flashes at the same instant the sun drops over the horizon do not signal in darkness for it will be seen if you are all right but still there Signal me once. You will find fresh fish easy to catch, but you must eat them raw. A fire would be seen. Okay, the young man breathed. He was dressed now in Japanese clothes which Sadao had given him. And at the last moment, Sadao wrapped a black cloth around his blonde head. Now, Sadao said, the young American, without a word, shook Sadao's hand warmly and then walked quite well across the floor and down the step into the darkness of the garden. Once, twice, Sadao saw his light flash to find his way, but that would not be suspected. He waited until from the shore, which was one more flash, then he closed the partition. That night he slept. You say the man escaped, the general asked faintly. He had been operated upon a week before an emergency operation to which Sadao had been called in the night. For twelve hours Sadao had not been sure the general could leave. The gallbladder was much involved. Then the old man had begun to breathe deeply again and so to demand food. Sadao had not been able to ask about the assassins so far as he knew they had never come. The servants had returned and Yumi had cleaned the guest room thoroughly and had burned sulphur in it to get the white man's smell out of it. Nobody said anything, only the gardener was cross because he had got behind his chrysanthemum. But after a week, Sadao felt the general was well enough to be spoken about the prisoner. So eventually now what happened? That uh, Dr. Sadao made all the arrangements and preparations for the prisoner. He told that the extra food and if he needed anything, then he is supposed to 
flash the light twice but not into dark otherwise it would be seen because no one lives over there moreover to that if he needed anything he could ask for he gave him his kimono to wear as well as he gave a black cloth for him to tie his hair and everything was set up and the american prisoner of war left at that time duration only on that particular night general takima's uh, health became very bad he was operated and for 12 hours it was very difficult to give a statement whether he would be able to live or not and he was having some problem which involved gall bladder so uh, he wanted to ask about the assassins but he thought that this is not the exact time to ask anything to general because he was not keeping good in his health by that time duration all the servants had written yumi had also written and they have cleaned the guest room thoroughly and they have burnt sulfur also to get that white men's smell out of the guest room and it it was something that nobody has seen nothing and everyone were behaving as normal and as routine as they used to behave earlier so after a week sada felt that now he should ask the general and should speak about the prisoner yes excellency he escaped sada now said he coughed signifying that he had not said all he might have said but was unwillingly to disturb the general further but the old man opened his eyes suddenly that prisoner he said with some energy did i not promise you i would kill him for you you did excellency sadav said well well the old man said in a tone of amazement so i did but you see i was suffering from a good deal the truth is i thought of nothing but myself in short i forgot my promise to you i wondered your excellency sadav murmured it was certainly very careless of me the general said but you understand it was not lack of patriotism or deliberation of duty he looks looked anxiously at his doctor if the matter should come out you would understand that wouldn't you certainly your excellency sadav said he suddenly comprehended that general was in a palm of his hand and that as a consequence he himself was perfectly safe i swear to your loyalty excellency he said to old general and your zeal against the enemy you are a good man the general murmured and closed his eyes you will be rewarded but sadav searching the spot on a blank and twilighted sea that night had his reward that there was no perks of light in the dusk no one was on island his prisoner was gone safe doubtless for he had warned him to wait only for the korean fishing boat so eventually now what happened after a week dr sadav no just talked about that matter and uh, the person means the chandul takima told that because he was busy in his own problems he was unable to fulfill and uh, by that time dr sadav was also more relieved and relaxed because by that time duration by that time duration he was now safe safe in such a way that the american prisoner of war had just left from there so it was very good for him that now everything was back to routine and the chief the head the chandral also told that he would be rewarded for that he stood for a moment on the veranda gazing out of the sea from whence the young man had come that night other uh, other night and into his mind although without reason there came another white faces he had known the professor whose house he had met henna 
a dull man and his wife had been a silly talkative woman in spite of her wish to be kind he remembered his old teacher of anatomy who had been so insistent on mercy with the knife and then he remembered the face of his fat slatterly landlady he had great difficulty in finding a place to live in america because he was a japanese the americans were full, were full of prejudice and it had been bitter to live in it knowing himself their superior how he had despised the ignorant and dirty old women who had at last consented the house him in her miserable home he had once tried to be grateful to her because she had in his last year nursed him through influenza but it was difficult for she was no less repulsive to him in her kindness now he remembered the youthful haggard face of his prisoner white and repulsive strange he thought i wonder why i could not kill him so at the end the doctor was standing on his veranda where he saw for the very first time where the prisoner came out of the water he was standing over there and he was recalling his past american faces when he was in america how the professor and his wife were no forcing him to stay when he met henna how none of them helped him or gave him shelter there was one lady uh who allowed him but still she was very miserable and at that time also when she suffered from influenza sadao uh, treated him and helped him to be cured at from that disease he remembered each and everything and how america was prejudiced at that time duration how restrictions were there on japanese and still he had managed he had suffered a lot but still uh, he doesn't you know remember how strange it was for him that he was not able to kill the prisoner of war so dear students this is all about the chapter i hope that you have understood this is one of the longest chapters which we have in our textbook i hope that you all have understood it Thank you for watching and have a nice day. If you still find any doubt or queries, you can comment down in the comment section below. Have a great day everyone.